hi all so in this video we are going to see about uh, how to create web apis in appian so first of all web apis what are web apis so web apis like when external system wants to connect with appian then in that case we use web apis okay when external system connects with appian they can connect with appian to either the get some data or they want to put some data into the appian system okay for, for example like for the website the front end part uh, are either based on some uh, programming language or websites you can say and the uh, backend is managed by the APN so in that case like web APIs are used so for this uh, 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 we are going to consider one very simple example like external system is there and they want to get a specific data of a customer okay so in our database if you go there in the database already tables are created there so whenever you want any data just type in the database VOF and you can see uh, tables are already present here customers are there orders are there okay so we are considering this table like they will give uh, the name of that customer and from our database we will give them the rest of the information like this okay so let's go and create a web api so first of all we will go to new and web api and here you can see various uh, templates are given or you can either create from the scratch as well and you can select your own method get post or whatever so we are going to select from the template and that is uh, query the data so they are just they are not putting any data or saving some data they just want information like for example i have given acme corporation so what is uh, the updated on updated by these details they want okay so i will choose query data store so for that i need to create a constant okay for the data store so before that let's just create a constant for that uh, okay and here i will just create voF customer uh, data store entity this is the constant i have created just okay this is data store entity customers data store uh, vof data store entity and just i will write something like uh, apis okay api i have written there and now i will create some data store okay the data store entity constant this is the data store vof okay and this is the customer so they want some data about the customer and now just click on create so our query entity is now created and now uh, just uh, copy that one and now we will go to new and in the web apis we will go to the query data store okay and here we will paste our constant and this is the what is the name of the web api so we will name it like get customer uh, data okay and this by default http method means get method only and what is the endpoint so that is not important it will uh, uh, okay so but we can write uh, something as a customer only for now and just click on create so once we have uh, okay this customers let's just use the customers and now uh, we'll keep the security as it is and finally we will click on save and it will open a new window for the web api so this is the basic window for our web api here we are writing the queries and here this is the panel for testing our web api so here you can see first path is the path okay so path is like the url that comes after the endpoint okay so it is the path for that and these are the headers that contain the information about the browser so while creating the web api you can give so here you, as well the headers has been used you can see here http bank header name is content type values application json so that is the information about the web browser so instead of that like we can write it here as well okay this is content type and the value is okay 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 and the value is application underscore 
json this is a very basic and all this information while creating the web api you can get it easily and this is the query parameters and this is very important like here uh, for testing our web api whatever suppose uh, they want some data about uh, this ecme so they will type ecme in their system and from our system we will give them information but how we can test it so with the help of query parameters we will uh, test it okay we will create it later on okay and here the method is written and here you can see here url is mentioned okay so for now like uh, just click on save changes and we'll show so whatever the data that is coming here you can click on this link and you can see all the data if i used here it is saying like all the data it is uh, the data is always in the form of json so you can say that uh, the data we get either uh, from this and uh, that is in json so json is a format of the web api from there they will get the data now uh, what here we if i test the request the same uh, data that you can see here that is in the json format here you will see it very uh, like in a neat format okay it is auto formatting app and if you remove that checkbox you will also see all the data like this only okay here and one of the uh, part of this web api here is it is uh, using the query entity and by default this is the entity for that and here it is using the expression so what we will do is we will copy all this expression from here okay and we will create our expression rule it is much better always to create a expression rule of ourselves uh, in okay instead of directly querying in the web apis okay so uh, get customer data so like this we have created so we will create our own expression rule uh, okay so for that and here we will write so filters as well so let's see so here you can see your batch size is 50 so it will give 50 data and uh, our in our table only 24 data are there so 24 only okay say 24 are there so instead of that what we will make it a uh, we will modify this query a bit okay so at one time they just want one data uh, because they want data of that so at one time they want one data and they don't want any random data of id1 they want uh, like they should able to enter the name okay any dynamic name they will enter so let's select a name for that purpose and if they enter like something as ecme core operation and test it then they should able to get that data how we can do inside the query so go inside the query there is a, a parameter called filter and we will use a bank query filter there and we will filter the data so which field uh, they will send us so they will send only the name okay that name and operator operator should be equal to okay and what is the value for that so value is a rule input name and just click on test so if i click on test we will get the data for that okay so let's select any other like uh, int systems i have selected and i will test with this and i should get all the data for this okay so this query is working fine but if i delete this and test the rule okay so it is giving some error so we have to make our query a bit more defensive in that purpose so if it is empty we don't want any query so we will just consider a if parameter if parameter helps a lot in this case if you want to make it more defensive if is null what what is null if is null rule input name is null then don't query anything okay otherwise query and now test the rule again so now you can see here and instead of dot so whenever we get any data instead of using the dot it can break the code so always use property function or index function for that purpose okay so if data is not available okay okay here ha huh, if data is not available then it will return null okay so suppose if i type any random uh, word here and click on rule input then also it won't break expression rule is ready and just save the changes and copy this expression rule and instead of this we will paste it here so rule bang this
and one parameter is here name now name parameter we have rule input i have used here but uh, here in the web api how to compare the name where which parameter should be equal to the name here the path header see path is something that if, uh, uh, requesting system that will get okay whatever after this we have written and headers are something like about web browser only query parameter is here uh, okay that contains uh, this so how to access the query parameters so i have written here okay this is how we can access our query parameters with the help of http bank request okay so with the help of http bank request only we can access the query parameter so just write here http bank request and after that if you give any dot then you can see you can see you can access all the details of the web api we only want the query parameters and inside the query parameters i will let me create a query parameter of name okay and dot name here i will give it just like that so first http para dot request then query parameters write it and whatever the value you write it here give it there okay and now let me test the data so if i test the data nothing is coming because name is null and now if i give ecme corporation uh, okay if i give ecme corporation then it you can see here we are getting all the details of the ecme corporation and if i uh, like capital system is here okay so let me copy this and uh, let me use in instead of that and let us test it so now you can see here we are getting all the details of the capital system and whatever the data we are getting it is inside a form of a json format okay so uh, whatever it is a bank to json it is converting in the body okay and if we don't use the auto format we will get the data like this so this was a very short introduction about the web apis okay and in future like we'll see more uh, web apis like how to start the process from the web api and get some data or extract the data from the json that also we'll see later on so that's all in this video thank you